God bless you, family. God, it's your brother DJ Samrock once again on the Blaze Bible Studies Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here at Winners with a Z dot O-R-G. Also on the TuneIn, the iTunes, um, the iHeartRadio, uh, SoundCloud, Stitcher app, and Spreaker, um, all over the online social media, um, the five um, most popular social media networks as well. Um, we're trying to get this message of the Lord Jesus Christ out to everyone, anywhere, everywhere. Amen. And I'm just excited that God gave me an opportunity to use what we have in the technology to broadcast, to webcast, and to do Bible study, spreading his message to those who probably would never have a chance or would never be even interested in listening to the gospel message, the good news of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I want to welcome every single listener right now at the sound of my voice from whatever application you're listening from. Uh, you might be listening live. You might be listening uh, as a, a podcast. You might be listening in iHeartRadio. Wherever you're listening, God bless you. God keep you and remember that God is good. But let's get into this Bible study tonight because it's something that's really um, touching the culture um, at least here in the United States, uh, the big issue of the existence of God is just going rapid. Everyone is talking about, does God exist? Does Jesus exist? Does it matter? Is a big debate going on. There's people saying that um, the atheist movement is just um, taking over Christianity in America. There's so many voices, so many people with opinions, so many things going on. Amen. But the word of God is the word of God. So the Bible is the most, uh, how you call it, scrutinized, written, um, ancient writing of all time. And it's the bestseller of all time as well. Amen. The Bible. Um, but it's not read a lot anymore. Um, because since the age of technology, the information age, you could Google anything. Um, and Google is not always the first uh, or the best thing that you should be using to get information about Jesus, about Christianity, about the existence of God, because Google is a platform of a search engine. So whatever the popular uh, opinion is in the search engine, that's what's going to pop up on the first page. And if it's endorsed by someone or is being um, publicized by uh, big corporations or big companies or people with influence and money, then you're only going to see um, that one opinion or that one statement or that one viewpoint or that one perspective. Amen. But when you open the word of God, there's something about the Bible that's just amazing to me. The Bible is so great that every time you read it, the author is right there with you. Amen. Jesus Christ is the author and finisher of our faith. So the question that I'm going to place before you, for you to ponder on, for me to ponder on, for all the listeners out there, does God exist? And if he does, so what? Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you, Father, for the opportunity to speak your word, to touch upon these topics that you give me, Lord God, and that you have um, opened up a platform to deliver this message, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that your uh, enthusiasm, your Holy Spirit, the power of your word will transform us, will engage our hearts, will get us to think and get us to realize um, what you're saying. And I pray, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit will reach every single listener, teach every single listener, including myself, and that we will all be blessed and give you the glory for it in advance. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Is there evidence for the existence of God? Is there evidence for the existence of God? Well, the existence of God, I'll tell you right up, I can't prove it. Ah, but it can't be disproved. Or he can't be disproved at all either. The Bible, the Word of God, and you might be saying, wait a minute, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in the Word of God because I don't believe there's a God, but that's okay. Whether or not someone believes in the Holy Scripture, whether or not someone believes that Jesus is God, whether or not somebody believes that God exists, um, it's kind of like in the background. I know through life experience that when things, tragedies have happened in my life and in my family, um, people die, um, I lose children, or something happens that's tragic. I realize one thing, the next day still comes. So whether or not I believed um, that this tragedy was going to happen or not, 
the next day when I woke up, the next day still came. So whether or not you believe in God and and you, or not, you might be thinking, well, Jesus said he's coming back. It's been a long time. Well, whether you believe he's coming back or not, guess what? Hopefully, we'll wake up the next day. And it's one day closer to his promise being realized. You know what I mean? The manifestation, the realization, the materialization of what he said. Amen. God's word is alive and active. Amen. So is there evidence for the existence of God? I would say personally in my life, yes, there's evidence because he transformed me and he continues to transform me. And if you if you really ask any believer out there, any Christian, anyone who follows Jesus Christ, they were, they're going to tell you something real similar. At least in the beginning of their walk with Jesus, something happened that they were awakened. Just like I was awakened, they were awakened by a realization that there's more to life, that there is a God, that there is a heaven, there's a hell, that Jesus Christ spoke word and that word came to pass in their lives. I know his word came to pass in my life. I was drunk and high, called upon the name of Jesus. I called out God and I said, you better change me. If you don't change me, I'm going to keep on moving. Um, there is no God if you don't change me by the time I wake up the next day. And guess what? God woke me up the next day, but not only woke me up physically, he woke me up spiritually. Something turned on in my soul. Something turned on in my spirit. And I'm believing from hindsight now, looking back at 2001 um, to the time of this broadcast, I'm like, wow, God does exist. So in my personal experience, I would say, I would yell, yes, God does exist. But I know people out there be like, he has to prove it. And that's not all too bad. If you ask God to prove himself to you, God doesn't have to, you know. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says it like this. But without faith, it is impossible to please and be satisfactory to him. For whoever would come near to God must necessarily believe that God exists. And that he is the rewarder of those who earnestly and diligently seek him out. So the existence of God cannot be proved or disproved. The Bible says that we must believe that God exists and we must believe by faith. God can show himself to anybody at any time. He can show himself to everyone right now at any time. He could prove himself to everyone right now. He could prove, show himself, prove that he exists. But you know what that would do? That would eliminate the need for faith. Then why would you need faith if God could just show up right now? You know, John chapter 20, verse 29 says, Jesus said to him, because you have seen me, Thomas, do you now believe? Do you now have trust in me? Do you now have faith in me? Blessed and happy and to be envied are those who have never seen me and yet have believed and adhered to and trusted and relied on me. So Jesus is basically saying, you disciples during his time when he was on the earth, they seen him. They seen the, the they seen Jesus, the, the, the word that became flesh. They seen him like with their own eyes. They touched him. They spoke with him. They heard about him. They seen him walk. They seen him talk. They seen him perform miracles. They were blessed, right, by that. But Jesus said, more blessed and more happy for those who have not yet seen him and believe anyway and trust in him anyway and rely on him anyway. Look it up for yourself, John 20, verse 29. So that doesn't mean that there is no evidence. People say, well, there's no evidence that God exists. Um Psalm chapter 19, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows and proclaims his handiwork. Verse two, day after day pours forth speech and night after night shows forth knowledge. There is no speech nor spoken word from the stars. Their voice is not heard, yet their voice in evidence goes out through all the earth. Their sayings to the end of the world. Of the heavens has God made a tent for the sun. Looking at the stars and all the galaxies that we can see proves that there had to be a creator. I know the Big Bang Theory says nothing 
out of nothing came something explosion and then it was intelligence and then it was all of this out of an explosion last time i checked when something explodes or blows up it, it's all over the place it never comes back together um if you see an explosion and things go out and come back together in order email me please let me know i would like to know uh, how that all worked out email me at radio at soulwinnerswithaz.org so looking at the stars just look at it look up at night look at all the stars see what you can see that surely proves that there had to be a creator someone who had all that power and knowledge and wisdom to put all these planets and stars and galaxies into place if not if not there would be no order to creation can you imagine that there would be no order everything would be just like random you know it would be a human here an animal there all in one room speaking talking and doing everything um, all crazy but we know there's order right uh, hopefully I'm talking to human beings and human beings are of the human mankind like you know what I mean don't scare me now I hope I'm not talking to aliens and robots and even if, if I am talking to an alien and you understand what I'm saying right now Jesus is Lord he created you too but what I am saying is that we're humans and we see like each other and inside of our bodies we have very similar organs and all kind of stuff going on in our bodies and it's an amazing creation now i hope you don't think that somehow some way that there was an explosion and then you were born science proves that we were all born the same way and science is trying to do that other ways but for the most part we were born between one man and one woman right and there was a conception and then there was a, a, a process of growing uh, for seven to nine months in your mother's womb. And then bingo, you came out through the same um, area of a woman's body that I think 100% of us come out. Well, because of science, I would say 99% of us would come out that way. Now there's test tube babies. Now there's other things going on. But for the most part, we can all agree that we were born through creation, through creation, right? We were created. We didn't just pop up. We were created. It was a process. So if there is no creator, then there would be no order to creation. Random chance, listen close, random chance cannot be the reason for the earth to have all the resources that we rely on daily. Water, that cannot be random. Are you kidding me? Um, Water. We need water to survive. If there is not enough water, they call it drought, right? And when there's drought, people get um, alarmed. And when there's drought, people say, whoa, we got to do something about this. Why? Because life, as we know it, without water, that will, that would be a bad day for everyone. All mankind, all animals, birds, reptiles, all kind of every water. Very basic, right? You might be thinking, well, we could get water anywhere, but where did it come from? Oh, it came from, you know, glaciers and this, this, that, and the third. Where did the glaciers come from? Oh, that was just, you know, there. Where did... And it just goes back and back and back. You have to go back to the origin of all these things that we see on Earth. There had to be a creator. I mean, science says they want to prove otherwise, but the beauty of God's Word in the book of Genesis Science needs three things to prove itself, right? It needs time, space, and matter. Listen to the beginning in Genesis. Chapter 1, verse 1, right? In the beginning, that's time, God created, right? There's a creator right there. The heavens and the earth, time and space. In the beginning was time, right? God is the matter, and he created matter and, and then heavens and earth space. So science basically took its principles from the very first 10 words of the book of Genesis. The book of Ecclesiastes says, says it like this. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11. He has made everything beautiful in its time. 
He also has planted eternity in men's hearts and minds, a divinely implanted sense of a purpose working through the ages, which nothing under the sun but God alone can satisfy. Yet so that men cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. Isn't that incredible? We all know that there's something more. I know you feel it right now. You know there's something more to life. It can't be just getting up, going to sleep, um, getting up again, going to sleep. There's more to life. If you're stuck in a routine and it's like dreary days and you just hate it, um, you have um, thoughts of suicide, you have a drug addiction, you have a sexual addiction, um, you're, you're, you're hooked to porn or whatever the case may be, I'm telling you right now, there's more to life. God does exist. There is evidence. There's millions and millions and millions of people that can testify that when they called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, there was a transformation in their lives. And it's not hocus pocus. It's not make believe. It's not fake believe. It's not um, pie in the sky. No, it's the truth of the living word activated in a believer's life. And if you're not a believer, what are you waiting for? Join the winning team. Every other team is going to lose. The Bible says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Amen. Sounds like it's going to happen whether you believe or not. But in the meantime, while you're alive and you're listening and you're breathing and you have an opportunity, why don't you do that on God's terms instead of go to God on your terms? Say, God, I want this eternal life. I don't. I want to bow down willingly. Uh, I don't want to be forced to bow down. And I want to confess you as Lord and Savior. You could just do that right now and get that started in your life. Prepare yourself for eternity, right? God has a place, has placed eternity in our hearts and in our minds. He implanted the sense of purpose. That's why every successful person started to dream about what they wanted to do, right? And once they started dreaming, they started planning out, writing things down, and putting it into play. And once they became successful, they looked back and said, well, that started from a dream. And it came to this, uh, uh, to reality. So if you could dream something, work on it, and then it comes to pass, why is it so hard to believe that God could start something and start, God could finish something in your life? He could start the process and finish the process in your life. Will it be the greatest days of your life? Maybe, maybe not. But I know if it's good times, God gets the glory. If it's bad times, God gets the glory. Why? Because he's there with you in the bad time. God is not unpresent. God is present in your life when you call upon him, when you're saved, when you're born again. He's present. It's like he doesn't check out when times get hard. He doesn't check out when your bank account is empty. He doesn't check out when you get sick. He's right there with you. The Bible says once you get saved, the Holy Spirit comes to live in you, dwell in you. Can't get closer than that. So God is always present in your life, in the life of a believer. Amen. Deep within every human being is a recognition that there's something more to this life. And there is someone who is beyond this world. You know, this uh, we just sent out um, the United States, not we, but, you know, uh, NASA just sent out a probe. It's going to be on a seven-year mission over a billion miles um, to go to, uh, I think it's an asteroid, and scoop up some rocks and pebbles and then bring it back. It's going to take seven years to do. Why? Because someone believes that there's, in space, there's life. And, um, hey, we're trying to prove that there's life in other planets. You know, praise God. I believe... Um, God could do that too. But in the Bible, it centers on this planet, planet Earth. What are we going to do with what we have now? I mean, seven years for a, a, a you know, robot to go into space and come back with dirt. Amen. And hopefully they'll find something. I'll tell you one thing they'll find. They'll find that it was out there. <laughs> they find that there's more than the Earth. There's more to, to what we can see. Amen. And there's all of that cannot be just by random chance. So deep within every human heart is a recognition that there's something more to this life. And there is someone who is beyond this world. We can deny this knowledge intellectually until the cows go home. But God's presence and his handiwork is still obvious all around us, despite 
all the evidence, despite it all, the Bible states, Psalm 14, 1, the empty headed, in other words, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. I'm not calling people fools. I'm telling you right now, the word of God says, the empty headed, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable deeds. There is none that does good or right. So I fall in that category. I don't do good. Only time I'm doing good is when God, because God is only good, right? Only God is good. When I'm doing good, that means the God in me is doing good. The God in me is doing good. The only good thing about me is the God in me. The majority of people throughout history in all cultures, I'm talking about all cultures and all civilizations, all continents, all of them. The majority of people throughout all history believe in the existence of some kind of God, small g. There must be something or someone causing this type of belief, right? So even though there's language barriers in this country, in Africa, and Israel, wherever, <clears throat> ask the culture, ask the civilizations there. They'll tell you that there has to be some kind of God. There has to be someone causing this type of belief. You know, there's Christians in India. There's Christians in Afghanistan. There's Christians in Russia. There's Christians all around the world. I hope you don't think that we're calling each other up and saying, let's get this story straight. You know, let's have a similar testimony. It's impossible. So I have a brother and sister in the Lord in China right now. I'm just saying figuratively. I don't know people in China, but there's Christians in China, right? That they call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Something happens to them. They're being transformed. I'm all the way in Bethlehem, PA, a small town, right? And I say, this, I call upon the Lord Jesus Christ and I'm being transformed. How is that possible that we're all getting this um, belief in us? We're all being awakened. How is it possible? We're not coordinating this stuff. It's not a conspiracy. It's not, uh, let, let's make this um, story um, relevant to the culture. No. The simple fact that there's people all over and throughout all history, right? The existence of some kind of God, they believe that. So there must be something or someone causing this type of belief. In addition to the biblical arguments, and I'm not going to get into all of them, but for God's existence, there are there are a couple of logical arguments, right? I mean, logical. You know, we, don't, we don't have to be all like, oh, I know 50 verses to prove it. No. Now, this is a big word, but I'm going to break it down. Teleological. Teleological argument. It means this. Since the universe displays such amazing design, right? There must have been a divine designer. Now, there's a big debate going on with uh, creationists and evolutionists. Creationists believe in the divine design and evolutionists believe in the random bang theory. For example, I'll give you an example. If the earth was just a little closer or a little further away from the sun, it would not be capable of of supporting most of the life that is currently supporting. Um, People, scientists say that the cockroach could live in in an atomic bomb. But I mean, humankind, if the earth goes a little closer to the sun, we're going to burn. If it goes a little further from the sun, we're going to freeze. Who's supporting the earth? And I know a scientist is probably like laughing at me right now, says, you you don't know who's supporting you know you don't know the access and of the you know the way the earth is spun and all this other stuff no i don't you're right i'm not a scientist i don't get too much involved in that um but i do know that something is holding um the atmosphere and the earth and it's not going full tilt and people saying like in a million billion years or whatever we're going to be in the ice age. Other people say we're going to burn up. Well, the Bible says that Jesus Christ is coming down with the new heaven and the new earth. What does that look like? He describes it. We read the book of Revelation. And also that uh, it's not going to be an ice age. It's going to be he's coming down with fire. So it's interesting what people say and what God says. So if I had to choose, which we all have a uh decision to make and we all have the ability to choose and to make decisions 
I would choose what God's word says. Why? Because it makes more sense. If the elements in our atmosphere were even a few percentage points different, nearly every living thing on earth would die. And notice it says nearly everything because there's some creatures that God created that will survive. Um, but humans, we need water, we need food, we need proper uh, atmospheric you know, situations to go on. Uh, we can't be in sub-zero weather for too long. We can't be in um, high heat for too long. So the odds of a single protein molecule forming by chance is 1 in 10 to the 243rd power. Whatever that means, it means there's a slim chance uh, that it was just a random thing that a protein molecule formed. That is a 1 followed by 243 zeros. A single cell is comprised of millions of protein molecules. So this can't be random. How we hear cannot be random just on um, being a uh, protein molecule being formed. It's not by chance, right? Second argument, cosmological argument. Every effect must have a cause. I know you heard this if you're in the universities or if you're going to school now. Every effect must have a cause. The universe and everything in it, it is an effect. There must be something that caused everything to come into existence. Ultimately, there must be something uncaused in order for everything to come into existence. That uncaused cause is God. Isn't that cool? God is uncaused. He's undependent. The cosmological argument says there must be something uncaused in order for everything to come into existence. This goes back to origin. How did the earth get here? Who created the earth? How did the water get here? Who created the water? How did humans get here? Who created humans? How did the birds go? And it goes on and on. There has to be an origin. There has to be someone who started it all, or something that started it all. I say it's someone because I have a relationship with God. You may not have a relationship with God, so you might say so something. You know, uh, a friend of mine um, looked at something and started following something on YouTube, and then he got in contact with me. It was like four or five years ago, and he said that the Bible was based on the evidence of aliens coming to Earth and then the writings of the scriptures and the Bible was based on some aliens that came to um, this world and built the pyramids and this, that, and the third. So I was like, wow, I never heard that before. Where'd you get that information from? He said, YouTube. And I said, really? You're going to base your whole eternity on YouTube videos and by people who say that they, they know exactly what happened millions and billions of years ago when they weren't there? So they're using some kind of faith as well by believing that. I'm using faith and believing that there's a creator. And my friend was using faith on another person or a group of people that says, well, it had to be billions of years ago and this is how it happened. Aliens. Well, um, I don't know. That's why I thank God for free will and choice and all that that we have because something doesn't line up. Um, if the Bible says that the earth was around eight, 9,000 years old, right? And there was people on inhabiting the earth and they wrote about it. And then there's um, history, there's places and things that people are finding till this very day that um, really uh, add to the Bible. Like it says, yeah, this was really a town. This was really Nazareth. This was really this place. And, and you have all this evidence. And then someone comes, well, that had to be 10 million years ago. When the evidence says um, that was within 8,000 years. Who would you believe? Because you have evidence in your hand that says this is, it has to be 8,000 years old. And then just somebody randomly says that had to be 8 million years old. Where's the evidence of the 8 million years? You know what I mean? So that's the cosmological order. Amen. So I, I'm running out of time here. Amen. There's more to this. And I hope it's helping you out. Amen. Um, I'm leading a small group. Uh in this time, in this season of my life, and we're going through apologetics, and apologetics is defending the Christian faith, and one of the things that always comes up is the existence of God, so I just thought I would just um, go in there and give a Bible study on it, 
learn from it uh, as I'm learning from it, and we'll go from there. Amen. So God bless you. God keep you. Thank you for joining me on The Blaze. It's your brother, DJ Sam Rock. I hope you come back next time and join The Blaze, the Bible study, every Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. God bless you. God keep you. And remember that God is good and he does exist. Amen. Peace.